What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. You join me and Diesel here at the beach because today I've got to do some editing and I've also got to test out a new product. And so I figure rather than stay at home, why not bring the van down here, park up and basically set up a little mobile office. But first, let's have a catch up because there's been some really interesting things going on in my life recently and I figure we should probably talk about them. What a glorious day. It is gorgeous out here right now. So this is Newport Beach and I am just north of, I believe this is Balboa Pier, which is the furthest one south. And then Newport Pier is just slightly north of me from here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it is absolutely stunning. Let's just post up right about here. And uh, let me talk to you about, you've already seen the title, a boat sinking and me being involved. He is such a beach bum. He loves the snow, he loves the beach. <laughs> So if I sit somewhere around here, how how is that gonna look? You're gonna dig, aren't you? Yep. Can we can we not? Can, can we not? Okay. Don't do it towards the camera. I'm trying to talk to people on the internet. It's so funny, every time I use a tripod now, I'm always like, oh, look at me, I'm like a professional photographer. I used to do it all the time when I was a professional photographer, but uh, now it's mostly just vloggy stuff. Um, but hey guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Adam, this is Diesel, uh, and together we make sort of adventure, lifestyle, general fun having videos with the uh, intention to inspire you guys to get out there, make the most of any situation that you find yourself in, and uh, really just kind of find your everyday adventure. And uh, today I decided that I would come down to the beach to do some editing. Uh, like I said, we've got some catching up to do because some crazy stuff has been going on with me. And uh, yeah, I've also got a, a little product to show you as well in a minute that I wanted to test out. Why are you biting me? Um, it's beautiful today. I would say it's about 75 degrees maybe and just not a cloud in the sky. This is, this is why I moved to Southern California for this. I mean, it's just idyllic, absolutely idyllic. But anyway, uh, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because I'd love to see you guys here again uh, if you're new to the channel. And uh, if you're an OG, welcome back. Uh, it's good to see you. Look, Lisa, I got your flower. I got your flower. Oh. No, so you, wear, you wear it, look. Put it, put it in your, on your ear. Oh. Oh, pretty boy. If you guys follow me on Instagram, then you might have seen recently that I got into a bit of a predicament. And by that, I mean I was on the scene to a boat sinking right here, just outside of Newport Harbor entrance. We're learning more about this boat that sank off the Newport Beach Harbor. A rescue operation off the coast of Newport Beach after a boat carrying 14 people started taking on water near the harbor. People on board of a boat off Newport Harbor had to be rescued, among them an 82-year-old man. It was kind of a surreal experience and one that I didn't really kind of get my head around until a couple of hours later. Basically what happened is I was out in the sea do with a friend. I was carrying my radio, radio with me uh, to monitor like the Coast Guard channel. Obviously, if I get into any trouble, I want to be able to radio in and typically channel 16 is silent there's never anything going on because people are safe however on this one day i was listening to music and there was just a lot of chatter on 16. so i turn my music down i listen in and it's a boat saying that they are taking on water they said that they were okay uh, they said that there was 14 people on board and that they were trying to make their way back to newport harbor a few minutes later they get on the radio again actually no it's now not i believe it's called a pan pan which is sort of a, a non-emergency distress transmission and it went to a mayday which is a emergency distress call they were sinking so at this point uh, the sheriff dispatched uh, the Coast Guard the lifeguard and the sheriff's boat and basically they were trying to find this boat which I then found out was just outside of Newport Harbor entrance I was about a mile offshore so they were in between me and Newport Harbor so I basically made my way back towards it to see if I could see them and offer some help or whatever just kind of be someone around in case things did go south uh, and as I made my way to them I couldn't see them but it was because they were being towed in at this point by a big like three-story Sunseeker uh, private yacht um, 
absolutely beautiful thing and they were behind it so as i'm going up to them i like make myself known to the captain and just say hey look you know i'm here so if there's any issues then uh i can at the, the very least i can take people on the sea and shuttle them to the big boat uh if it does start to go down so he's like okay yeah no i think we're good i think we'll make it in so i'm following them for another couple of minutes and i basically see the nose of this thing start to go down so they shift everybody to the back the back starts to go down and at this point i'm like this boat is sinking right there's no way it's not get this the boat name sink or swim i see this boat going down and they put in the distress call again basically tell the sheriff that they're going down the sheriff's on his way but because there was so much traffic in the harbor entrance they couldn't see the boat and also the mega yacht was kind of in the way of the boat and the sheriff so i kind of went around the side and luckily i always carry flares with me on the sea do just in case i was ever to need to get someone's attention so i hit a flare hold it up above my head and they see the flare and they end up coming over i hear them on the radio say okay we've got you so they come over i had a girl on the back of the sea do with me so i dropped her off onto the yacht and then went around the front of the yacht and when i got to the port side the boat was pretty much all the way down now in the back and people had started to jump off at that point, I then saw two ladies that were panicked, that weren't jumping off the boat. Uh, they both had their handbags and they were freaking out, mother and daughter. So I was at the side saying, you've got to jump away from the boat, like come over to me. It wasn't far, it was probably like six or seven feet, but I just didn't want to get too close to the boat because I know that when they sink, they can sometimes suck you down with them. And obviously I didn't want to be another person that needed saving. So I stayed away from it a little bit. They finally managed to jump away from the boat. And as they got to the side, they were both panicking because their bags were weighing them down so i quickly grabbed their bags off them threw them onto the sea do and then picked them up and sort of put them so that their arms were over the side over the gunnels on the side uh, and that they were you know somewhat safe the uh the mother of the mother daughter combo started to freak out uh, because she then told me that her elderly auntie was on the boat and i turned to look at the boat which is behind her and the boat is completely under the water now apart from like this much of the nose so at that point i was panicking thinking that the grandma uh, the uh, auntie was still on there and i was carrying mask in my uh sea do and i thought that i was going to have to jump in and see if i could get down before it sank but luckily i looked over and saw that she was on a um, like a sofa cushion that was floating and uh, she was there with two of the guys and they were floating her over to the sheriff's boat so that was good she was safe she also said that she had uh, an elderly uncle as well and uh, he was good too they would put two life vests on him and he was floating on his back and they were pushing him towards the big yacht so the two most high risk people had been saved and were okay so I turned my attention back to the mother and daughter pull them up onto the boat and unfortunately on that sea do I have the ice chest on the back normally if I didn't the swim platform is huge and there's a step so I could have got them around to the back they could have stepped up easily and gotten onto the sea do as it was neither of them were particularly strong swimmers and also neither of them were particularly fit and so it wasn't gonna work so I literally had to grab onto them while I was trying to pilot the sea do around to the sheriff's boat and sort of drag them and on the way around the mum started to have a panic attack and so I had to like stop and get a hold of her and basically say look at me we're gonna be fine I've got you I promise I'm not gonna let fell like something out of the Titanic I'll never let you go Jack but I was like I'm not gonna let you go we're gonna be fine so I basically took them around and then the daughter started to feel like she was dragging under her mum so she started to panic I later found out that apparently she had almost drowned at some point in her past so all kinds of like PTSD and worry going on as I'm trying to negotiate the cedar and get back around to the sheriff's boat but at no point was I worried that I was gonna lose either of them Anyway, long story short, I managed to get them to the sheriff's boat and when we get there, they throw in the life ring and we get them onto the boat and they're fine. I then quickly zip back around to look for anybody else, but luckily everyone had kind of made their way to one of the two boats. And uh, at this point, the uh, vessel that was sinking, sink or swim, had completely sunk and was now in probably at that point, 50, 60 feet of water. And eventually it went all the way to the bottom, which is about 120 feet where we were at that point. So I went around, scooped up another bag and uh, tidied up some of the mess went and took it over to the sheriff's boat so that he could pick it up uh, and then followed the boat in the big boat in and the sheriff and had to go give a statement and then obviously said hi and bye to all of the people involved and everyone was good no injuries just a lot of shaken up people and uh, I'm sure a lot of alcohol was consumed that, that evening to get over it I know that as soon as I left I had a couple of beers because I was like that was crazy 
But what I'm thankful for is the fact that I was able to help out, the fact that I had the sea -Doo, the fact that I had the flare on board as well. You know, all of these things that might seem like it's over-preparing. Um, and, you know, I have the flare, I have an EPIRB, which is like a thing that you throw in the water and it sends a distress signal so people know where you are. I have one that I wear as well. I have water on board. Like, I have so much. I'd probably be the only person that would get lost at sea on a sea -Doo and gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of like extra stuff I carry on that thing um so anyway yeah managed to get back and uh all was good and yeah just stoked that I could be there and help out and that everybody made it safe because I can guarantee you that if we were further out or if they were further out when this had happened and they didn't have another boat to get to them then it would have been a totally different story because for sure the two ladies that I was with that I helped they wouldn't have been able to swim for very long so I'm just so thankful that it happened where it did we we're all able to go and help out and everybody went home safe um, what's really sad is they were actually out scattering ashes of uh, some of their loved ones uh, and so for it to happen on the way back from that is just not a good situation but um, like I said just happy everyone was safe everybody uh, managed to make it out okay and uh, boats can be replaced they sell more so the guy's gonna claim on his insurance and uh, we'll be all good to go and he'll be back on the water in no time hopefully Speaking of water, should we go get you a drink? All right, bud. Go on in, Up. Good boy. Yeah, it's actually, the sun is hot, but the wind is really nice. There's a nice breeze, so there you go. That's it, splash it all over the floor, good lad. Okay, so the other thing that I want to show you uh, is something that was sent to me, which is this guy. It's a portable power pack, like I said, I'm here to do some editing uh, and so unfortunately I don't yet have my solar panels hooked up to my batteries um, so I don't have power in the van from the solar on the roof that is coming very very soon. I know I keep saying the van's almost done but Chris is now working on a huge job for the next six weeks so it's going to slow down our progress but I am in that time hopefully going to get all of the plumbing and all of the wiring done uh, and that will mean that when Chris gets back, then we'll be able to just zip up these last little bits, do like the edging and finish the doors and stuff, and then we'll be good to go. But for now, for my power, I use these little power packs and uh, I have this new one to talk about. So let me get my laptop set up and uh, we'll dive into it. Alrighty, so what we have here is the EcoFlow River Pro. Now this is a 720 watt hour power bank. This can also be expanded up to, I believe, 1440 watts with a, watt hour should I say, with like a, a extra battery thing that plugs into the side. Now I'm not just gonna read you off the tech spec because you can go and do that online all you like. You guys, if you're interested in these types of things for if you're camping or if you just want something around the house in case it's a power cut or something, you wanna know how good they are, how you use them, how I use them. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of give you an overview on what I've been doing with this thing. First of all, when I'm in the van, like I said, right now I don't have my solar hooked up. So I have my fans, which are, there's one above the camera and there's one in the back. I have them hooked up to this guy. And so I can now turn on the 12 volt power. I can turn on my fan in the back. And I can turn on my fan here. Actually, I'm not going to do the one above the camera because I don't want it to be noisy. What I like about this thing is that it shows you how many hours you can run whatever device you're running at the power consumption that it's running at. So for example, right now, with this fan going in the back on full power, I have 60% battery left on this because I've been using it, but it's telling me that it will run that for nine or 10 hours. It's kind of dipping between the two. So I know that I could run all night, I could run that fan at full blast, or I could put both of them on half power and it would run those all night long on half power or for five hours if I have them both blowing full. Now that is on 60%. Obviously, you know, you can add another probably three, four hours on top of that if I was on a full charge. Uh, and you can charge this thing via a 12 volt so you can plug it into the, the van while you're driving, charge it that way. You can plug it in obviously at home just using a regular wall plug. Uh, and then I also have a solar panel here I'm gonna show you in a minute that allows you to hook it up so that you can charge it on days like this when it's nice and sunny. So right now, for example, when I'm using my laptop, I can hook up the solar panel, put that on the roof or outside the van, and as this is powering my laptop, the solar panel will be topping this up. I don't know if it will do it at the same rate because obviously solar panel isn't as efficient as this is at delivering power to a device, but at least it kind of gets you a little bit more power. So let's plug in my laptop. So right here we have uh, an inverter that allows me to plug in any device I want. Hit go, that will start working. And let's turn on my laptop and we'll see what it says here. 
So this is telling me that with my laptop plugged in, it's putting out about 75, now it's 90, 90 watts, 115, 130 watts, dun 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 dun. So yeah, it looks like around 110 watts is kind of where it's settling. And it says that right now with that fan going and my laptop running, it's gonna give me enough power to run them both for two hours. Now don't forget, that is not including my laptop battery itself. Um, although now it's gone up six hours. So it obviously depends on how much power my laptop is drawing. When it boots up, it probably draws more. Um, but yeah, I just that's such a nice thing that I can see what the power uh, outlet or the power remaining is in hours rather than just percentage. Because it means that if I'm editing and it gets down to one hour, I know to start to wrap things up. So that is very cool. Now, I am contractually obligated, not to mention any of their competitors, but if you've watched my last videos, then you'll know that I do have another one that I use that's slightly bigger. This is so much better in terms of the user interface. They both deliver power, you know, if you buy uh, a power bank, it's gonna deliver power, that's its job. What I love about the EcoFlow is the fact that it gives me all of this information on this really nice LCD screen. It's a little bit smaller, it's very light. I mean, I can lift it up with one arm like that, um, which I know that I made that look heavy, but it's because I got my arm out. But you get the point, it's a pretty compact package. I don't know why you'd want it, but it has a light on it as well. Who knows, maybe you need a light at some point, your SOS. Um, and then on the other side, you can input your solar power, you can insert your uh, regular power, and then it also has an overload protection. So if you overload it, it'll trip the fuse, and then you just click the button, and it'll get you going again. So this is a real game changer for me, because it means that I can come out, I can come and edit from places like this. Uh, you know, I've got six hours battery right now, seven hours battery, it's cool. This thing's gonna run all day long, and uh, yeah, I can run three devices on the regular AC power. So my fridge, for example, that's in here. I could also run the fridge. Uh, I can run basically anything you want. I'm just really stoked on it. It works really well. I love how compact it is. It looks very nice. It's very well made. It's very sleek. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely recommend these. Uh, if you are looking for one of these, they are, let me tell you, $649. Um, and I think they're well worth it. If you do any type of like camping or traveling in a car or even just having them around the home, like I said, in case of a power outage, definitely worth it, definitely worth having one. Um, and then the solar panel, if you do stuff like I do where you can post up and set the solar panel up, obviously that's great as well. It will also charge from zero to, I believe, 80% charged in one hour, which is crazy. So like I said, right now it's at 58%. Uh, you could charge it up to 80% within one hour. None of the other ones will do that. So that's a really nice feature. You can get power into it quick. So if you are traveling, if you go to Starbucks or something, plug it in, have a coffee, kind of chill out for an hour, and you'll have 80% of your power left, which might get you through another day or two of powering a van like this. So super stoked with this. Um, Eco, EcoFlow, thank you for sending this to me. Uh, just a disclaimer, guys, this was sent to me for free. However, I am not obligated to say that it is good. And if it was junk, I would tell you it was junk. And I actually say this to any company that approaches me with a product. They'll say, hey, would you like to test out a product? Some of them I'll just say straight away no to because they're not of interest to me. But if they are, I always tell them, hey, look, if this is junk, I'm gonna tell my audience. So just know that if you send it to me, I am not going to just say it's good because you've given it to me for free. So just a little disclaimer, guys, you can trust what I say. I wouldn't recommend anything that I wouldn't spend my own money on, and this, I absolutely would. So yeah, very impressed with this. Uh, let's hook up that solar panel and uh, I'll show you how it charges as well. Okay, so this is solar panel. It's big. You get four big old panels. Now, what I've just realized is that there is a cable that allows you to connect this to the power pack, which apparently I don't have. Either I don't have it or I didn't bring it. I'm not sure which one it is, but it basically allows you to connect it to the port here, uh, and I don't have it with me. So I can't show you how it charges this, but needless to say, it does. Um, so if you were ever to wanna just like charge up, top it up, when you're out and about like this, obviously that's the way to do it. But uh, yeah, there you go. So that is the EcoFlow Pro river power bank Whew. all right then guys well look that is going to wrap up this episode i have got to get into some editing so that you guys can continue to watch these videos um, i'm so thankful for each and every one of you that watches these because you allow me to live this lifestyle and honestly I couldn't be happier. So thank you guys so much. If you aren't subscribed, please do subscribe. I'd love to see you here again. Give this video a big thumbs up because that really helps. And until next time, remember, don't know anything I wouldn't do. See ya.